So I'm going to just start a brand new comp just to close everything and start uh, from scratch. So I'll create a brand new comp and I want to bring my footage in nice and fresh. I'm going to go to a standard workspace so I can just see what I'm doing. So I'm going to import the eight ball movie that you guys have as well. We're also going to bring in the Rhino. We'll go ahead and drag the movie to the make new comp guy. And we're going to grab our Rhino and drag him directly into the uh, viewport here. I'm going to just resize the Rhino. And when I scrub the footage, you'll see that the ball is going to go across the screen. The goal is, of course, for the Rhino to follow not only the ball itself, but to follow a little bit of the rotation. So as you notice here, the the eight ball is rotating, of course, because it's rolling. So when we do our track, we're going to ask the tracker to do a little rotation as well. So the Rhino is not going to spin around with the ball, but it is going to rotate a little bit. OK, so I'm going to put the eight ball right about there. I'll put the Rhino right about here. And now we're ready to bring our tracker into position. So let's go back to our motion tracking workspace. And we're going to click on the footage itself to enable these tools. Having the Rhino selected is not going to do anything because the Rhino is going to receive the motion tracking data. So it knows what to do so it can follow the object that we're going to track. So I'll click on my movie. And now these buttons light up. We're going to choose track motion. And when we do that, of course, we receive our track point. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this frame. And we're going to grab this guy and put it right about there. But we're also going to help it out a little bit more. So we're going to take this exterior box and we're going to make it a little larger. So the whole eight balls in there. And I'm going to take this uh, search region and I'm going to move it down a little bit. Just like this. And we hope, of course, that this will lock on. You know, you're never guaranteed to get it because it is blurry and it is a moving object. So we hope that this is going to be good enough and we can always reset this. So let me just show you here when I restore this, if you mess up and it doesn't work, you have a reset button and you could try again. Now we have to tell the tracker to analyze the footage, which means it's going to watch the motion of the ball. So let's go ahead and hit this button right here, which is analyze forward. When I hit the home key on my keyboard, of course, I could jump back to the beginning of my footage and I can manually scrub and I'm going to hope that the tracker stays attached to the ball. Let's see if it does. And so far, it is actually following the ball. Granted, it's not exactly where I put it, but that's good enough for now. And we're going to now apply. What this means is it's going to take that tracking data and apply it to our Rhino, which is the other object in this comp. So apply. And then we get a dialog box that asks us which dimensions are we going to track X and Y, which means left and right and up and down. X only, which is left and right or Y only, which is up and down. So we're going to choose X and Y. Now we have a bunch of keyframes that show up in our timeline. Now, of course, before I applied this or did my analyze, I could have also enabled rotation, as I said I was going to do, but I want to keep it a little bit simpler. So I'm going to once again hit home on my keyboard and I hit the space bar and let's see what happens. And there it is. The Rhino follows the ball. So I'm going to go back to a standard workspace. And once again, let's go ahead and see what happens with the Rhino. So I'll deselect everything. And the tracking data is now put onto the Rhino and then the Rhino follows that ball. Of course, you can manually tweak these frames if you want to. It's quite a bit of work, but you could do that. I'll go back to my motion tracking data. And once again, if I click on my footage, I can choose to track motion again if I want to. And I can also enable rotation and scale depending on what my object is doing. So if this ball were growing and shrinking, I might want to put scale. If it was rotating a lot, like spinning all over the place, I would apply rotation. Then, of course, I could tell it where to go. So here's my motion source, which is, of course, the motion, which is the movie itself. And I can also choose my target, as you see here. So the motion target is the rhinoceros. And After Effects was smart enough to realize there was only one other file in here that it could apply to. But if I had other PNGs in here or other files, I could choose it from this list. So I could choose 
whatever layer I want to apply the motion to. So guys, that is how you can do a motion track. In the next lesson, we'll talk about how to do a stabilization.